हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट स्लॉटर मशीन इन डिटेल सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंट पार्ट्स अवेलेबल इन दिस स्लॉटर मशीन एंड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट लेट अस हैव अ लुक एट दिस सिंपल फिगर एंड नाउ ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंट पार्ट्स अवेलेबल फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स आल्सो बिकॉज इन अवर सेपर मशीन एंड प्लानर मशीन टॉपिक वी हैव डिस्कस्ड many similar parts that you can see in this slaughter machine so now let us write the different parts available one by one so the first part as you can see over here this first part is called bed and this bed is used to hold or to support entire structure that is available in this slaughter machine now the next major important part that is called as the column and this column is the vertical part as you can see over here and this vertical part is used to support the main ram movement that is obtained in the case of the slaughter machine and this column is also consist of the many mechanism that are used to obtain the table movement or the slaughter movement that are required during machining process now the third part that is called as the table and this table is used to hold and support the work piece that means the work piece is set over on this table now the next important part that is the fourth one it is called as the ram and this ram is used to obtain reciprocating movement of the tool the next part that is fifth one it is called as the tool holder and as we know this tool holder is used to hold and support the tool and the tool is available in this tool holder and the tool if provided over here then it is nothing but the tool which we need to indicate during this schematic diagram of this slaughter machine and over here as you can see another mechanism is provided which is used to operate this slaughter machine or we can see the motor is provided over here which is required for turning on and off the entire machining operation in the case of this slaughter machine so now we have simply summarized the main important parts available in this slaughter machine and now if we summarize the common parts available in the case of the saper machine planer machine and slaughter machine they are let us list over here the first common part available in the case of all the machine that is saper slaughter and planer the first one that is the bed which is used again to hold and support entire structure next important part that is column that is the vertical part available the next important part that is table and this table is used to hold and support the work piece and this table is also used to provide axial movement that is movement in the x direction and in the y direction to the work piece this table is used the next important common part that is the ram and this ram is used to provide reciprocating movement to the tool for machining operation because as we know the main working principle of any saper planer and slaughter machine that is the reciprocating movement of the tool or it may be of the work piece the next common part that is the tool holder and this tool holder is used to hold and support the tool and the last common part that is the mechanism 
so the mechanism mechanism that is specifically we are discussing about which type of mechanism is used to obtain the reciprocating movement of the table or the workpiece and we have discussed in our previous lecture that it may it might be of crank type it may be of crank and pulley type it might be of the hydraulic type or it might be of the geared type so different mechanism can be used based on the requirement so these are the common parts available in any of the maybe it may be a saper machine planner machine or it may be a slaughter machine so now i hope it is clear to you that which are the main important parts available in the case of the saper planner and slaughter machine now let us have a look at the simple 2d schematic of this slaughter machine so now you can verify all the details that we have discussed from this figure the first part that is the base another is table next tool tool holder ram column and motor which is used to finally provide the operating movement to this machine so now where this slaughter machine is used or where this slaughter machine is useful that we must need to discuss so we have discussed in our previous lectures that saper and planner machines are used to finish or to machine the horizontal surfaces maybe to machine the vertical surfaces maybe angular surfaces and if one want to obtain any formed profile then it is also possible with the help of that planner and saper machine then when this vertical saper machine or also it is known as this slaughter machine is useful so this slaughter machine is useful to generate the slots on the component or to obtain keyways on the component at that time majorly this slaughter machine is used because these keyways are necessary for fixing of that particular part on any machinery so any shape of these slots or keyways that can be generated easily with the help of this slaughter machine and the mechanism available in the case of this slaughter machine are similar to that of the saper and planner machine and based on the requirement that mechanism can be used and there might be a variation and the mechanism used in the case of the slaughter machine so in this lecture we have discussed about the main major working of this slaughter machine and what are the basic important parts available in the case of this slaughter machine again i am repeating the working principle of this slaughter machine so now what is the working principle of slaughter machine pause the video over here and try to recall the working principle of slaughter machine and then verify it with what i am discussing over here so now what is the working principle of this slaughter machine so the primary motion that is required in the case of that in the case of this slaughter machine that is the vertical reciprocating movement of the tool so again i am writing over here the primary motion that is the reciprocating movement of the tool that is the primary motion whereas the auxiliary motion that is the translatory movement of the workpiece translatory movement of the workpiece that means it may be moved in x direction or it may be moved in the y direction so the movement in x and y direction is known as the translatory movement i am repeating this topic because in many of the time for you there is a confusion in between the working principle of the saper machine slaughter machine and the planner machine so up to now in many of the videos we have discussed about the working principle of the saper planner and slaughter machine so keep this in mind that there is a similarity in the case of this saper and slaughter machine just a difference in the movement in the case of the saper machine there is a horizontal movement whereas in the case of the slaughter machine there is a vertical movement 
other than this primary and auxiliary motion are similar whereas in the case of the planner machine the reciprocating movement of the workpiece that is the primary motion and the translatory movement of the tool that is the secondary or auxiliary movement so now keep all these auxiliary and primary motion in your mind regarding to this saper planner and slaughter machine let us discuss about mechanisms available in the slaughter machine so the first mechanism used that is slotted link and gear mechanism the another one is slotted disc mechanism the next one and that is mostly used in many of the machinery that is reversible electric motor and the widely used nowadays in industries that is the hydraulic mechanism and as we have discussed previously in the case of the slipper mechanism this hydraulic mechanism is fluid operated and in the case of slipper machine there is oil is used and why there is advancement or use in this hydraulic mechanism is it overcomes the problem arises that is in the case of the mechanical parts used in different mechanisms the major disadvantage of using this mechanical parts in the mechanism is that the first problem that is the noise because in the case of the mechanical parts the noise is generated which is harmful to the operator the second disadvantage that is the vibration of the machinery as the mechanical parts are operating it leads to the vibration of machinery and which might deteriorate the surface finish and the third disadvantage of using the mechanical parts is that due to the continuous movement of that parts let us take an example of the gears when the gears are meeting each other there are chances of wear and tear and the gears and after certain times this gears needs to be replaced for better machining operations so the another disadvantage of using that mechanical parts that is the wear and tear so all these disadvantages are overcome by using this hydraulic mechanism and due to that these hydraulic mechanisms are used in industries nowadays so these are the different mechanisms that are used in the case of the slaughter machine as per the requirement and let us now discuss the major application of this slaughter machine this slaughter machine is used for machining flat surfaces it is also used for machining cylindrical surfaces similarly it is also used for machining irregular surfaces and also during cam machining and the major use of this slaughter machine is machining slots keyways and grooves as per requirement on the component so up to now in this lecture we have discussed about in detail the slaughter machine parts slaughter machine mechanism and the application of this slaughter machine so i hope it is clear to you what are the importance of this slaughter machine and where this slaughter machine is helpful so looking forward to see you all in our next lecture up to then thank you